for our sins. We ask you to bless the memory of Henry Sivilkowski on this Father's Day. We ask you to bless this gathering. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, Leon has something to say. I'm gonna paint the house, starting tomorrow. Red. Barn red. Barn red. <laughs> yeah, also, uh, I'm gonna start clearing off the last five acres. Me and Joseph decided to start that this summer. I want to say something. I want to make a toast to my sons. Your father would be proud of you. She's a grandmother. So I'm his mother. Hey, look. That's just the way she is. She means well. You know, sometimes he goes to her instead of to me. Well, he's happy. I'm happy. You should be happy. Yes. <laughs> Come on, it's going to be all right. Mr. Gibbs said there was extra work. I could have it. We were going to be alone today. You said we'd go somewhere to be together. Joseph's got two jobs. You got the truck to pay off. Well, it worked last night. It's not fair to Joseph. Well, I'll wait here until you get back. It's going to be late again. I want you hanging around like that. A coin. All right? A coin. I'll see you. Second? Second? Right turn, right turn, right turn. <laughs> you learning good? You want to drive me to work? Huh? Okay, we gotta go. Yeah. I'll see you at 7.30. I mean, yeah, Margaret's not gonna like it. Oh, come on. I'm just going for beers. No big deal. Uh, Maybe that girl's gonna be there again, huh? No, uh, Leon, just beers. All right. 7.30. All right. Promise not to bother you about women. Come on, Leon. Unless you ask.
Joseph. Joseph. How you doing? <laughs> Look who's asking. I think I broke my shoulder. Oh. Yeah, it's stupid, isn't it? That's all right. You look okay. <laughs> I'm gonna sneak that girl in here for you. She'll fix you up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was looking forward to drinking with you. Okay, is there uh, anything I could do for you? Yeah, would you find out when I'm getting out of here? Yeah, sure. You look okay. I'll be back. Daddy coming home? Soon. When soon? Pretty soon now, almost any time. Joey, what kind of ball player are you? Catch. A catcher, huh? See if you can catch this, right? Good stop. We have to move your brother, Mr. Sipikowski. Why? Wait, what's wrong with this place? We can't treat him here. He's got a broken shoulder. We think it may be something more. He needs equipment they don't have here. Dr. Escobar, admitting desk, please. You said he had a broken shoulder. The second set of x-rays shows one of the bones in the neck is completely shattered. We can't deal with that here. But you said he had a broken shoulder. Dr. Escobar, admitting desk, please. Ah! for the house. Mm. Barn red? Yeah. Well, I, uh, I took Mama with me. She, she picked it out. Oh, God, I'm glad that Pop can't see me like this. It will be all right. How's little Joseph? How's he doing? Terrific. He's... I was playing ball with him. He's a, a good ball player. He's a, Terrific ball player. Margaret's, uh, Margaret's at the store with some mamas taking care of him. You know, I'm scared, Leon. Oh, come on. What for? You, you're gonna be all right. Tell what they said. You know how they talk. They, they want to make you expect the worst. Well, what did they say? Myself, I don't, I don't think they know so much. One guy thinks one thing, they bring in another guy, he thinks something else. You yeah, what, Leon? The first x-ray uh, looked like a broken shoulder, like they said. And then they said they were wrong and that uh, some other bone was broken, some, some bone in the neck. <laughs> what bone, Leon? I mean, uh, now tell me what bone is. Some bone. What the hell do I know about bones? <sighs> huh? They're gonna operate. They're gonna, they're gonna look in there. Well, they said it was my shoulder. I said I broke my shoulder. Look after this operation. There might not be so much pain. Maybe none. Maybe, yeah, but I... Will I be all right, Leon? Leon, come here. Will you touch my feet? Leon, will you do my legs? Just come here and touch me. I just want to make sure that I'm still here. <laughs> do, do my feet, Leon. Leon, my feet. Leon, will you do my feet? Now, what's the matter? Would you just, will you, uh, will you touch me and do my feet, Leon? 
Leon. Come on, Leon. I don't feel anything. Do my legs, Leon. No, Leon, do, do, do. Leon, do my feet. Come on, please. Nobody's gonna do them. I gotta know something. Put, Leon, just do them. Leon, I can't. I can't feel anything. What are they doing to him? They're going to operate. It's going to be a long operation. They have to make sure he can breathe without difficulty. He doesn't like that. He needs it, Mr. Sivilkowski. It's important. Wait, wait a minute. Is he going to come out all right? I mean, is he, go is he going to be able to use his body? They're going to do everything they can. That's not a nice story. I don't care. You ever tell you that? All right, I was like, uh, what, maybe eight years old. And uh, I wanted a bicycle. Mm -hmm. But we didn't have any money, so, uh, so I said to him, I said, uh, I want a bicycle. <laughs> 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 so he went out and got me one. He just took it from some kid. <laughs> he was always taking care of me, you know that? He was always, always looking out for me. You're always in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I'm cold. He's dying! My brother's dying! You didn't hurt him. He's okay. You didn't hurt him. Yeah, I'm 
promise me I can keep doing this. Like, Leon, please, Leon, please. Oh, please. operation, Mr. Sivilkowski. I only assisted. Just saying he might have to have that tube in his throat for the rest of his life. Well, I don't think his chances are too good. He's going to be like that for the rest of his life? They're going to do everything they can. You can't stay like that. It's a tragedy, I know, when it happens to someone young. I saw a lot of that in the service. It's a tragedy. I mean, they waste away like that. They get bed sores. After a while, the sores don't heal anymore. They stare at the ceiling, they stare at the floor. I mean, that's all they do all day long. Now, I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen to your brother, because I don't know what's going to happen yet. I don't know what's going to happen. It's too bad. It's a very hard thing. I should go up there and shoot him and get it over with. That'd be the smart thing to do.
can't, Leon.
Mr. Rose, Mr. Sibokowski's here. Thank you. Come in, Leon. You like plants? Yeah, sure. I'm pleased to meet you, Leon. Glad you could come down this morning. Your employer, Mr. Gibbs, asked me to take your case. My brother does his taxes. How do you feel about my being your lawyer? I don't have any money. Come on, sit down. I know about the money. I understand your mother put the house up to cover bond. She did. I'm fortunate she could do that. I'm fortunate to get out of jail so quickly. Did you shoot your brother, Leon? Yeah. Why? He asked me to. Did you always do what your brother asked? I gave my word. Joseph asked you to shoot him, and you did. What condition was he in when he asked you? He hurt. He, uh, he couldn't move anything. He had nothing from the neck down. Did they have him on drugs at the hospital? Sure. Sure, I guess so. If he was under the influence of drugs, how do you know he knew what he was saying? He asked me. Didn't it occur to you not to honor this one request? No. Didn't it occur to you to wait to see if he was going to get better? He was never getting better. So you took his life? His life was gone. You killed your brother. I love my brother. Mr. Rose? Mr. Rose, I'd like to work on the Sibokowski case. What the Sibokowski case? Leon Sibokowski. I haven't announced whether or not I'm taking the case yet. She's taking it. Miss Wiggins, our interns do not eavesdrop, they do not spy, and they definitely do not choose their own assignments. Murder is more interesting than real estate. Well, there happens to be more real estate than murder in this world. Certainly, we deal with more of it at this firm. After three years in law school and a month in your library, I really feel I deserve this case. I'm giving it to one of the associates. Come on, Mr. Rose. I come from the same kind of background as Leon Sibokowski. I was raised in the country. I understand these people. I've got a good mind and a strong disposition and a very minimal social life. You'd have my undivided attention. Well, I'll, uh, I'll think about it. Nice color. On red. I like to paint. Yeah, I like to smell. I like the satisfaction that comes from seeing the result of your work so quickly. Yeah. Tell me about the gun. Enough guns. Then, uh, tell me about Leon. Leon is like his father. A promise is a promise. Could you have stopped him, Mrs. Sibokowski? Couldn't you have stopped him? Your indictment came through. First degree murder. That's what I expected. We only have two months to prepare, Leon. That's not much time. Me and Joseph, we're going to start clearing in here. You see that over there? Oh, yeah. In there. I didn't want to do it. Something we started with my father, you know. My father died last winter. 
Me and Joseph had other things to do, like uh, pay off the truck, you know, get another one. <laughs> we were going into business. Joseph was special, huh? You loved him? I told you that. Did he love you? We were brothers. And your father? We were all like brothers. Like this. Mm. I take it you know a lot about guns. Sure. Why is that? I hunt. Oh, you're a good shot? Good enough to hunt. Oh, you're a good hunter. I take my time. I, I plan what I'm going to do, and then I do it. Be careful. Joseph never had much fun. Why don't you shoot him, Leon? Why not just pull the plug? I thought about that. I thought about just unplugging the machine that he was on, but then I, I thought maybe it was rigged somehow. You know, maybe there's some kind of warning that goes off, and, and then the people come back and they plug them back in, and I couldn't take that chance. Thought it over. I had one chance to do this. Gave it a lot of thought. Wanted to make sure he would definitely die. Do you understand the difference between what you did and going to the court to ask permission? No court would understand. You could have waited. He might have gotten better. And if he hadn't gotten better, you could have gone to court. There are procedures. For you, maybe. There's no procedure for us. The state is saying that you planned Joseph's killing, that you thought about it, that you weighed the pros and cons of it, and that you willfully carried it out. I wish he had more fun. You appear to have done all that, Leon. You didn't see what he was like. You didn't see the pain. You weren't there. The state makes no provision for that. Look, in the paper, they call what I did a mercy killing. There's no category of crime for it. If you kill someone, it's murder, it's manslaughter, or it's nothing. Our society hasn't come to terms with the idea of euthanasia. Maybe it can't. Maybe it shouldn't. What's going to happen to me? Do you think what you did was right? He was dead from the neck down. But was it right? Would you have done it if he hadn't asked? The pain was unbearable. What if he hadn't been able to talk from the beginning? What if he'd just been lying there in pain without being able to talk? I know what he was feeling. I know what he wanted. Would you do it again? Yeah. Oh, if you'd like to earn some of the... Uh small fortune we pay you. This is the uh, autopsy report on Joseph Sibokowski. I read it. Oh. Well, it's interesting. Uh, Joseph lingered for 27 hours after Leon shot him. It's a long time. Could have died from something else. Pneumonia. He had developed pneumonia. A man is shot in the head and you want to tell a jury he died of pneumonia? Well, look at it this way. That day, after the accident, Joseph could shrug his shoulders. The next day he couldn't. Two days after the accident, he could breathe on his own. After that, he needed a tracheotomy. He was deteriorating very rapidly. And so he just deteriorated until he died. Well, that's a definite possibility. Death could have been inevitable, gunshot or no. Curious. Leon says he loved his brother. He says he did it for love. Not grounds for defense, no basis in law. He said Joseph wanted to die, that he begged Leon to do it. He had the victim's consent. Still not grounds for defense. Mm. There was um, a wad in uh, Joseph's brain tissue. What do you think that was? I don't know, something from the shell, maybe? Well, there were only 24 pellets found. 20-gauge shotgun shell has more than 100 pellets in it. What happened to the rest of them? I don't know. We'll find out. All right. I went back in and I said to Leon, what are you going to do? And he said, 
Do you want to see Joseph like this for the rest of your life? And I said, we can hope. We can pray. Ruth came over. Ruth was laying gone. She and Joseph went to high school together. She introduced us. Yeah. Ruth couldn't stop him. I couldn't stop him. His mother couldn't stop him. Did anyone try? I'll show you what my Yosef did. Just flowers. Not worth anything. He did it to look at. Just to look at. Why won't you help me, Mrs. Sipokowski? Why are you making it so difficult? Too many questions. The police. The people from the press. Too many. You ask me about things that have nothing to do with what Leon did. Mr. Sibokowski, I ask what I think I have to. In the war, I was forced to work in a factory for the Nazis. I kept my mouth shut. I work hard. I survive. You understand? To survive? You understand every day to have to survive? This is for Leon. It's not for me. says he thinks carefully before doing something. Says he plans it out. He did think out killing your brother. I have a brother. I couldn't do that. What are you suggesting? There was no premeditation? That a man who saws off a shotgun, prepares a shell, drives 20 miles, concealed a weapon, put it three inches from another man's head, and pulled the trigger, didn't think about what he was doing? I'm just saying I don't understand it. You know, what I don't understand is why someone didn't try to stop him. Why did he shoot his brother? How can you take a life, especially when it's someone you love? We're taught to value life, to preserve it. I couldn't do it. I don't think there's any way I could do what Leon did. You know, I think there are a lot of other accomplices, too. It goes all the way back to the night of the accident. Why didn't they operate on Joseph right away? Time sequence is very important in administering medical aid. Why did they risk moving him in that condition? I think they should have brought the treatment right to him. I'm not going to take on the medical community of America. I'm just trying to save one man. Warren, you're a psychiatrist. Could you do it? What Leon did? I think so. Really? Well, I don't know. I, mean, I don't think anybody knows that about themselves. I don't think Leon knew he could do it until he was actually faced with it. You know, it is possible that Leon was unable to separate his pain from his brother's. It's possible that Leon hurt so badly that he killed his brother in order to relieve what he was feeling. I'm not sure I'd know how to convince a jury of that. You're not going to attempt a euthanasia defense? No. Someone has to. Not me. It would be a landmark case. I'm not interested in a landmark case. All I care about is giving the jury a legal excuse to set Leon free. 
Let someone else change the world. Well, I'll tell you something. A psychiatric defense is the weakest approach you have. It's the only approach I have. You know, there have been a lot of studies done on intolerable stress. Everyone has a stress limit. There were, what, what was it, three days between the accident and the shooting? Yeah. How much sleep did Leon get during those three days? I'm not sure, not much, I imagine. Well, I think you should find out. Enough sleeplessness might be grounds for a psychotic episode. Hypothetically, the idea of intolerable stress caused by lack of sleep is worth looking into. Yeah. Tell me uh, about your sleeping habits. You mean with girls? Well, I'm sure that would be worth my while. What I mean is, uh, when you put the light out, close your eyes and go to sleep. I sleep fine. Nothing on your conscience? Nothing. How did you sleep the night before Joseph's accident? I didn't. That was the, uh, the night I was with that girl I was telling you about. Oh, yeah, and you didn't get home till 10 the next morning. Yeah. And then you went to church? Yeah. Did you sleep at all that day? Nah. What about that night after the accident? Did you sleep then? Not much. How could I? And the next day? <sighs> I was at the hospital during the day, and, uh, and that night... It... What's all this about sleep? Who cares about my sleeping? Did you feel like you... You were losing control of yourself after going so long without sleep. I never lose control of myself. I never did my whole life. Okay. You play sports in high school? Nah. No time. That you wanted to. Nah. I have more important things to do. I like baseball, though. Yeah, I used to play a lot of baseball. Over at this lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this lot near where we lived yeah. before we moved to the farm. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was a hell of a hitter. How'd you do in school? Oh, great. I graduated. Yeah. How about Joseph? He graduated. He was pretty smart, though, you know. And so was I. We could have done better, but uh, we had more important things to do. Was Joseph your friend? Sure, he was my friend. Did you ever argue? Yeah, sure. Sometimes. Hmm. What about? What about? Uh, working around the place, like, uh, who would cut the grass? Never about other things? No. You like your sister-in-law? Sure. I heard you had your eye on Margaret. You heard wrong. No, yeah, I heard you and Margaret were playing around behind Joseph's back. You heard wrong, did I? You're damn right you did. I don't think you loved your brother, I think you hated him. I think you hated him because he got all the attention. He was the man, the head of the family, the one your mother always turned to. Where are you going, Leon? You can't run away. I don't run. Your brother was selfish, don't you understand that? He asked you to kill him, and then he left you holding the bag. He left you to suffer the consequences. Don't you hate him for that? I did it for him. You did it for him? You took his life. Everyone has a right to live. No one has a right to take that away. What the hell are you representing me for? Huh? You don't care about me. You hate what I did just as much as everybody else. Didn't you hate him? I love my brother. Then why did you do it, Leon? Why? I did it because it's the right thing to do. Leon's doing a good job on the house. He wants to please you.
tell me what happened that night when he went upstairs to get the gun. What was he like? I don't want to see Leon spend the rest of his life in jail. The only way I can keep him out is to prove that he wasn't right that night, you understand? If I can prove that he wasn't responsible, he says you took the gun from him and put it on your bureau. He says he took it back from you later. I never saw any gun. Okay, you see, now if I can prove that he wasn't right in the head that night, if he says you took the gun from him, and you didn't, it would indicate that he was behaving under a delusion. You understand that? Margaret said to me, to take a pill and go to bed. She said for me not to worry, to go to bed. I took some pills. Did you take the gun from Leon? I never saw this gun. Never. Okay. father used to tell me and Joseph about Poland. How his family had uh, 65 hectares of land. It's over 100 acres. Two houses. How we all would have uh, lived on that land forever like important people, except they lost it. He used to uh, tell us about when he was a boy. They were very poor. One time this Cossack came to their house on a horse in the winter time, you know, ice all over him. And his father split the Cossack's head open with an axe. Took his horse and his clothes and buried him. They had nothing. They were starving. How does that experience make you feel about your father, Leon? He's a great man. You know, Leon talks about his father as though he were still alive. Sees his father as a deeply moral man whose sense of loyalty, thanks. Loyalty, fairness, where he meet. He wants to be like his father in some very fundamental ways. You know, when I asked him how his father would have reacted to the shooting, he said he would have done the same thing. Except he said his father would have shot himself afterwards. Leon says he thought about that, but... He didn't quite have the courage. I think the family collaborated with the shooting. At least, they were passive participants. They did things for him. They... They could have stopped him. Uh, the Sibilkowskis operate out of a very basic set of motivations. Their values are very different from yours and mine. At least to the extent of their view of life and death. Life for a man exists within very narrow parameters. Joseph's value as a man was gone. They knew it. He knew it. Being paralyzed was a humiliation he just could not stand. If he'd injured his mind, if he still was able to work to father with an impaired mind, then I don't think the same thing would have happened. Uh, by the way, this is all my personal opinion. Come on back. You have any trouble finding the place? Nah. Not a little. How about a beer? Yeah, sure. I've decided on a psychiatric defense for you. I'm not crazy. No, no, I just have to establish that you weren't responsible for what you did. In 1843, an Englishman named McNaughton set out to kill someone Suffering a delusion, he ended up killing someone else. 
He was tried and found not guilty by reason of temporary insanity. That's the basis for the defense I'm talking about. I'm not crazy. That's not the point. Your brother was alive, Leon. He could think. He could see and smell the flowers he loved. He could watch his son grow up. He could read. You killed him, a living man. You don't know what you're talking about. That stuff, that's, that's nothing if you're just laying there. It's not alive. No work, no sex, not being able to do anything. That, that's no man you just described. That's nothing. I can't go in with the facts. There aren't any that help us. Do you understand that? Yeah. Yeah, I understand. I can try to get you off completely with the kind of psychiatric defense I've just described. Or I can go for diminished capacity. That means that uh, you were only partially responsible for what you did. Juries like it. Takes them off the hook. What happens to me? You'll be found guilty, but the judge has discretion with the sentence. You'll get ten years, maybe less. But I, I go to jail for sure that way. If you're convicted of first-degree murder, the judge has to hand down a life sentence. It's a law in this state. It's automatic. I don't want to go to jail for one day. <sighs> it's a big gamble, Leon. The odds are against us. I'd rather take that chance. Everything or nothing. Because ten years from now, I'll be, I'll be 33. I won't have my young years ahead of me. <laughs> 33 isn't so old. No, I'm older than that. You got everything. I got nothing. Everything I get, I'll have to get with my hands, and they don't last so long. If I work hard now, maybe I still got a chance to, uh, to get something for myself. Life is more than having things. Sure. Sure it is. That's how come it's always the guys who got everything who tell you life is something else. I'd rather take the chance you can get them to set me free. Because they take ten years away from me. I'll never catch up. Mr. Carney, we don't know how long this trial could take. Is that a problem for you? No problem. Murder is a terrible thing, isn't it? Terrible. It's the worst thing a person can do. Do you think killing your brother is a more serious thing than, say, killing somebody you don't know? I think all killing is terrible. If someone doesn't want to live, and they believe they have no reason to live, do they have the right to ask that they be killed? I believe no one has such a right. Life is everything comes from God and only God can take it away. No one else has that right. That's what I believe. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi. Hey. The guy downstairs said it was okay for me to come off. Sure, come on in. about that front page you work a lot Sundays a lot so how am I gonna do how'd it go at the state psychiatrist he didn't ask much in, in and out you nervous about the trial how do you think it's gonna go Never know for sure. What's that? This is going to be a chart to mark down exactly when you slept and when you didn't. I want the jury to see how little you slept. It's important that they understand that. They going to let you use a thing like that in court? <laughs> I don't know. I hope so. A lot depends on how the judge feels that day. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a little nervous about it, I think. I don't have to worry, though, do I? Because they're going to let me off. Now, you know, we worked very hard to seat a jury that would be sympathetic. I told you, psychiatric defense is weak. Mostly we have people who are past middle age, mostly conservative, mostly Catholic. Victor Burton, the DA, is an experienced, thorough, aggressive attorney. He'll present the case based on evidence. 
that evidence will seem awfully clear cut. All rise. The Honorable Judge Trevera presiding. You may be seated. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. I'd like to have Joseph Sibokowski's medical records entered into evidence. Uh, Your Honor, I'd like to know what that is on the easel. Yes, Mr. Rose. It's just a blank chart. It's got names and dates on it. I intend to use it as witnesses take the stand. All right. A state maintains that this case consists of a willful, deliberate, and premeditated murder. It is murder in the first degree, and based on the facts of this case, it can really be nothing else. Now, the state will prove to you that the three necessary elements exist in abundance, that Mr. Sibulkowski had the premeditation, which is the plan to kill. He announced that intention the day before. He certainly had more than ample opportunity to weigh the pros and cons, which is the deliberation in this case. He had to get the gun, saw it down, prepare the shells, drive to the hospital, hide the gun, take it to his brother's room, hold it a few inches from his brother's head, and pull the trigger. You've described in great detail, and we appreciate the professionalism, your arrest of Leon. Now, Sergeant, you're familiar with shotguns, are you not? Yes, sir. What is this one? That's 20 gauge. Used more or less for birdshot. Mm -hmm. You fired shotguns? Yes, sir, I have. Would it be dangerous firing this one, sawed off as it is? Yes, sir. Why? Well, it's not meant to be fired like that. You can't tell what'll happen. Might get yourself hurt. Would it also be dangerous to fire a shotgun around oxygen, say, in a hospital room like the one Joseph was in? Oh, sure. Whole place might go up. That'll be all. On the day of the accident, from two in the afternoon till two in the following morning, you were with Leon most of the time? Yes. Please. Speak up, Miss Groove. <clears throat> yes, except when he went to work. And did Leon sleep at all? No. Now, what about that next night? What time did you see Leon? About 10.30. And what time did you leave him? Between 2 and 2.30 in the morning. And did Leon sleep at all? No. Now, what about the day of the shooting? Leon called me about 5.30. He was screaming and yelling. Uh, he said, you don't know what they've done to my brother. He said he was talking to this doctor in the patio coffee shop. And the doctor told him that Joseph would never come home again. I'm sorry. He said the doctor told him that his body would waste away. Uh, Your Honor, uh, I object to this uh, third grade coloring chart that the defense is using. It's not been marked into evidence, yet it's been on display to the jury. Now, I object to its, it's presence It's at least here. a fifth grade coloring chart, Your Honor. <laughs> you gentlemen approach the bench. I think the time has come for explanation, Mr. Rose. It's a diagram. I intend to offer it into evidence when it's completed. <laughs> Mr. Rose. You don't mark a diagram and then at some later time see how it's worked out, then offered in evidence. Now, what is it? 
I would represent to the court, and its accuracy can be checked against the transcript, that marked in red are the time periods when witnesses observed the defendant awake, marked in blue, time periods when he was asleep. It's a matter of convenience to demonstrate graphically the critical part of my case. It's a visual aid. I object to it. Visual aids are fundamental and traditional in presenting a case. True, but its accuracy can't be verified. Everything on it can be checked against the transcript. But, uh, we can do that, Mr. Burton. We'll wait until the end and then we'll decide. We'll check it against the transcript and then decide. Thank you both. If you participated in the surgery on Joseph Sibelkowski? I assisted. Did you talk to the defendant after the operation? After the surgery, I was downstairs in the patio coffee shop. I talked with him then. Would you relate that conversation to us, please? He asked me if it was true that his brother's spinal cord had been found bruised. I said, yes, that's what they found. He asked me if I'd seen injuries like it, and I said, yes. Did you tell him to have hope? I said that in medicine, there's always hope. We have to have that. Now, did the defendant indicate any time how he felt about his brother or what he felt should be done? Yeah, he said the smart thing to do would be to shoot him and get it over with. No further questions, Your Honor. Doctor, did you discuss with Leon what happens to someone when they're paralyzed from the neck down? Yes. He asked me what the long-term outlook was. I said it was impossible to be sure that every case was different and that it would take time to know. Did you tell Leon that what happened to his brother was a tragedy? Did you talk to Leon about his brother spending a life of looking at the ceiling part of the time and the floor part of the time? Did you talk about bed sores? Well, if I did, it was in describing cases I'd seen like it. It took you two days after the shooting to tell the police about your conversation with Leon, didn't it? Object. Sustained. You were aware when you talked to the police that the hospital was concerned about being sued. Were you reacting to that? Object. Sustained. Be careful, Mr. Rollins. Did Leon seem nervous to you? Extremely nervous. He was upset? Yes. He said he couldn't stand the pressure anymore. Something like that. He told you the smart thing to do would be to go up and shoot his brother. Shoot him and get it over with. I was very upset about it. You were so upset you didn't tell anyone what he said? So upset you didn't reach out a hand to help him? Did you try to help him? Improper question, Mr. Rose. The doctor's not on trial. Don't ask that kind of question again. Hello? Oh, no, 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 that's all right, Leon. I don't care what time it is. I don't mind. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, just starting to get to me. I, I, didn't, I didn't think it would, but sitting in that courtroom and, and you know, just uh, listening to everybody talking about me, I, I don't like it. It'll be over soon. You'll be fine. Yeah? Yeah, you, you really think so? Uh, that's not a promise, Leon. I can't promise that. Uh, we could think everything was fine and the jury could come back with guilty. There's no way to know. I was... I was thinking about Joseph. I was thinking about him tonight. I missed my brother. Leon grew up in an old-fashioned European family. The concept of right and wrong was clearly depicted from the time he was born. It was a family that had a need to fight off passivity, not to be at the mercy of fate, to take matters in hand. Leon was taught to solve problems in an active way. Yes. And when Leon gave his word, he was honor-bound to keep it. Yes. What effect would Joseph Sibelkowski's condition after the accident have on Leon coming from such a family? In my opinion, Leon suffered a gross stress reaction brought on by exposure to overwhelming conditions. It was a psychotic reaction of a temporary nature. A psychotic reaction includes 
mental aberrations such as memory loss, distortion of reality. He could be absolutely certain something happened when in fact it didn't. Uh, Dr. Oliver, did you examine the defendant uh, on behalf of the state? I did. I gave him a standard psychiatric examination. Did you uh, reach a conclusion based on your examination? I could find nothing basically wrong with this man. I could find no indication of psychosis. Well, do you have an opinion as to whether Mr. Sibelkowski knew the nature and quality of his act? Did he know right from wrong? I feel he definitely did. He carried out the purposeful act of terminating his brother's life, which was something he indicated he very much wanted to do in light of his brother's predicament. Do you know when the shot that killed Joseph Sibelkowski was fired? When? When? In time, I don't know. Do you know what date the shot was fired? The date? I don't know. Did you inquire during your examination what effect Leon's father's death had on him? As to the effect in detail, no. Are there circumstances under which an abnormal response to a parent's death can be important to your work as a psychiatrist? Oh, there are always possibilities of that type. Do you know how much sleep Leon got between uh, the time of the accident and the time of the shooting? No, I assumed very little. Didn't you ask him how much sleep he'd had? Uh, no, it wasn't pertinent to my examination. Sleep deprivation does have an effect on mental condition, does it not? Yes. Sleep deprivation hurts us all. Thank you. Mrs. Sobokowski, I only have two questions to ask you. Did you take the gun away from Leon on the night of the shooting? No. Did you see the gun? At all? No. Did Joseph ask Leon to swear to God not to let him live the way he was in the hospital? Yes. And did Leon swear to God? Yes. On the day before the shooting, did Leon try to save his brother's life? Yes. How? Leon knocked against a tube that was in Joseph's throat accidentally when he was putting a blanket up on him and the tube came loose. Leon went crazy. He went screaming down the hall that his brother was dying and that someone should come save him. He was scared that he might die. May I ask a question? No, <clears throat> you're excused. What about my husband? My husband is dead. He's the one who's dead. He's dead. Why did she say that? It was bad. I saw the jury. They didn't like that. The judge told the jury to disregard it. How could you forget something once you hear it? so much for myself. I've lost cases before. Not that I like it. The risk is always there. It's him. I don't want him to go to jail. It serves no purpose. In Leon's mind, he's committed no crime. I understand that now. I'm just not sure I can make it clear to the jury. Is this the gun? Please answer out loud, Leon. Yes. You have other guns at home? Yes. Are the others more powerful than this gun? Yes. Why did you put wax into the shotgun shells, Leon? I don't know why. I, uh, I guess I thought it was the right thing to do. 
Makes the impact more powerful? It does that. If you'd used a more powerful gun, would you have had to wax the shell? No. Why didn't you use a more powerful gun? Wouldn't it have been easier just to use a more powerful gun? I guess so. You sawed off your least powerful gun, poured wax into two shotgun shells, went to all that trouble when all you had to do was use a more powerful gun that you already had. I guess so. Why did you do all that, Leon? I don't know. After you prepared the shells, did your mother take the gun away from you? Yeah. Yeah, yes. What did she do with it? She put it on her bureau in her room. Did you hear your mother say that she never saw the gun? Yes. What do you make of that, Leon? I don't know. I I have a picture of what happened in my mind, and in that picture, she took the gun. I, I saw that. What did you do? What did I do? I don't know. I got it back, I guess. Did you go to the hospital alone? Yes. Now, you hid the gun under your coat in front of Margaret and Ruth, right? Yes. Why did you do that? I knew the hospital nurses would never let me into my brother's room with a gun. Was the gun loaded? I don't remember. What did you do when you got to your brother's room? I asked him if he was still in pain. He nodded that he was. And I said, uh, I'm here to end your pain. Is that all right with you? He nodded that it was. The next thing I remember, I shot him. Did you do anything with the tube in his throat? I pulled it out. Why did you do that? My brother didn't like that tube. Your witness. Now, you've said you hid the gun under your coat. You hid the gun under your coat? That's right. Because you knew the nurses wouldn't let you into your brother's room with a gun? That's right. Now, why do you think the nurses wouldn't let you walk into your brother's room with a gun? I knew that they would never let me relieve my brother from his pain. Oh, so you knew it was wrong then to walk in with a gun? I knew they would never let me walk into my brother's room with a gun. Because it was wrong to walk in there with a gun? Because it was wrong to walk in there with a gun? Right. I don't know. I, I wasn't thinking about that at that time. Are you telling us you didn't know whether it was right at the time? I'm telling you that right now, I don't know what I was thinking at that time. But you knew it was wrong to shoot your brother. Did I know it was wrong to shoot my brother? Right. At that time, the only thing that I had on my mind was relieving my brother's pain. I didn't think about anything else, except that. Mr. Sibelkowski, if you had to do it again, would you shoot your brother? If the circumstances were the same, would you do it again? I object. Sustain. No, I want to answer the question. Your Honor. I want to. My brother, 
was the most important thing in my life. So, sometimes I think that I would, that I definitely would. Sometimes I'm not sure. I don't know. That's what the answer is. I don't know. I don't know. The state psychiatrist sees nothing odd in Leon's behavior, perhaps because he knows nothing of Leon's behavior. He didn't know that Leon believes his mother took the gun away from him when in fact she didn't. He didn't know about the fluctuations in Leon's behavior, the memory lapses, the pictures of things he saw that weren't there. He didn't know about Leon's lack of sleep. He sees nothing unusual when informed that Leon had approximately six hours of sleep, marked in blue, in four days, the rest of that time, he was awake. The prosecutor sees nothing odd in Leon's preparing two shotgun shells with wax and using one of them in a sawed-off gun which endangered Leon's own life when he used it, when he had a more powerful gun sitting right next to the one he selected. There's no question Joseph Sibelkowski had some severe injuries and was under heavy sedation and medication. I'd like you to give that a lot of thought. Or is someone really in a position to say, I want to die? Is that rational? Is that reasonable? Ask yourself about Joseph. What was going through his mind? What kind of medication did he have? What kind of pain was he going through? Was Joseph Sibelkowski in a position to make a rational request of that nature? The chart graphically depicts Leon's lack of sleep. The testimony clearly establishes the effect sleep deprivation has on a person's mind, on their behavior. Now, all of us understand that uh, a leg breaks when exposed to too much stress. What about the mind? Every one of us has a limit. Every one of us can be pushed just so far before as I told you in the beginning, this is a very difficult case. It's a case full of sympathy. I have sympathy for Joseph's widow, for Joseph's mother, even for Joseph's brother. But that does not alter the law. Joseph is dead. Sympathy does not make the taking of his life less serious. The law deals with facts, and the facts in this case are clear. The law states that life is sacred and that the thoughtful, deliberate, willful taking of a life is murder. There's something else involved here. Something not found often in a criminal courtroom. The element of love. Love belongs with us. It's been with us since the afternoon of Joseph's accident. Love. It's been a major force in the Sibelkowski family. And we all understand how hate moves men. We must understand that love moves us even more. Love is a greater corrupter of man. Not of his soul, but of his reason. When love attacks our reason, are we not then helpless to defend ourselves? We are taught to reject hate. We're taught to defend ourselves against it. But love is an emotion for which we are taught no defense. 
It appears as a friend. We welcome it. We embrace it, even while it robs us of our senses. Leon loved his brother. Is that not Leon's only true crime? That his reason was overwhelmed by his love. When this is over, when you're home again, when you look at yourself in the mirror, I want you to be able to say, I decided this case on the evidence. I decided this case on the law. When I put my hand on that Bible and swore to God that I would return a verdict, that is exactly what I did. I returned a true verdict according to the evidence and nothing else. The jury deliberated for two hours and 40 minutes. Then they set Leon free. From the time I first met Leon, I started asking myself, how is it possible for someone to take the life of a person he loves? I tried to put myself in his place. I tried to imagine if what happened to Joseph happened to my brother, what I would do. I asked myself, is it possible to love someone that much? So much that you feel their pain as acutely as they do? I ask myself still, could I ever love anyone enough to do a thing like that? so many questions. When the trial was over, Leon turned to me and said, you know what you did for me? You did for me what I did for my brother. <laughs>